Now today is going to be a bit of a buyer's guide, but this is not your average Joe buyer's guide. This is an extreme buyer's guide. This is a buyer's guide for how to buy a computer if you're one of two different types of people. The one kind of person who might buy this computer drives a Bentley and lives in a mansion. He also owns his own plane, okay? The kind of person it's not even going to make a difference. And then the other kind of person is the kind that lives in their mom's basement and doesn't have any worldly possessions except their computer because that's how much it costs. Okay, so the place we start is on the, I'm just going to do that, is on the case. And there's a good reason. Whenever you're building an extreme lead, Uber, Ponage, whatever you want to call it, gaming machine, you've got to have good cooling and it's got to actually look like a decent computer. So we're going to get this opened up, but I just wanted to take a quick moment to just sort of introduce the Cooler Master Half X. This was one of the only cases on the market that can even accommodate the components that we're putting inside it today. Now I mentioned cooling features, but I'm just going to sort of start by opening up the case. The first cooling feature is a 200 millimeter fan right on the side panel blowing directly onto our GTX 480 four-way SLI video cards. So it uses a ducted design to bring fresh air from the outside right onto the heat pipes, right onto the parts of these video cards that need nice fresh air. So we can take that side panel off and sort of file that away for now. And then let's have a look at the other unique cooling features that the Half X has that will enable it to support this kind of hardware. First of all, we've got a 230 millimeter red LED fan at the front that actually switches, uh, the LED switches on and off if you press a button on the front of the case. Check that out. Pretty sweet. Okay, so that's one of the features that I thought was kind of unique about this case. And then the next is at the back, we've got a 140 millimeter fan. That's pretty standard fare, but it also has mounting holes for 120 millimeter if you want to put a radiator or any other kind of cooling solution up there. And then finally, in the top, we have room for two, and I'm just going to move my half 922 here, which I have for comparison's sake. We'll get to that later. You can actually put two, and it comes with one, 200 millimeter fans up in the top there. So I don't know if you can really see that. The light's not too great. There you go. You can see the spinning fan. And another thing that they've worked into this case, I'm using a wussy stock cooler. I apologize, eh, my Elite Gaming rig is not quite as lead as it could be, but the Half X actually supports a dual radiator natively, and with just a tiny bit of creativity, you can easily fit a triple radiator up here. I mean, no sweat, you can throw a triple radiator up there. So that pretty much covers the cooling features of the Half X, and uh, now let's get down to component selection in just a moment. Now we've talked a lot about our selection of the case based on its cooling efficacy, but there's also just the sheer awesomeness factor. You've got to pick a nice big tower if you want a nice big computer in it. This is the Half 922. This is a great case. It's got lots of great cooling options, etc., etc. This one is just more and bigger and better. So that's why we went with it. I just wanted to show you just how big this thing is. I even have the Half 922 sitting in front of it, and it still dwarfs it. And the Half 922 is not even a tiny case by any stretch of the imagination. So now let's talk a little bit about the component selection that went into building the most extreme machine we can. I did make a couple of compromises and I'll talk about those first. I'm using the Intel stock cooler. The reason for that is that it was handy. Okay. Really you should be using something like a Noctua D uh, D14, or you could be using anything like a Cooler Master V10, something huge would be great. Ideally, though, water cooling is going to be the way to go in a machine like this. Secondly, I'm also only using three DIMMs, and the reason for that is that you get the best overclocking out of your CPU and out of your RAM when you don't load up the motherboard with six DIMMs of memory. So that's another small compromise that I did make. Other than that, this machine is loaded to the gills. So, the motherboard, that's where everything starts because we started with the EVGA X58 four-way classified motherboard. This motherboard is actually two slots longer than a standard ATX board. And I did a full video on that topic. Check out that video as well if it's uploaded yet. But what that means is that there are only a couple cases in the world that will support that motherboard. Yet another reason we chose the Half X because if you look up at the top of the Half X here, you can see there are two unused PCI slots there and I'm yeah there you go two unused PCI slots there even though we've actually got 
eight PCI slots worth of video card installed. That's how it achieves it. It actually is a longer motherboard and the slots start two slots lower than they normally would. I see the cameraman is having a look at our GTX 480 four-way SLI. So this motherboard includes the bridge that we need to hook up all of these video cards, but there's a lot more to it than that because each of these monsters is going to pull as much as 125 to 150 watts of power from your power supply. So we had to pick a power supply that is capable of running a machine like this. We settled on the Silverstone Strider 1500 watt. This is a fully modular 80 plus silver power supply capable of supplying 1500 watts under load 24 7 with 80 plus silver efficiency this is that is no mean feat that means that your computer if you're sucking back everything this power supply can offer will actually be almost enough to triple breaker on its own so if you have any other computers running in the same room better make sure they're running off a separate breaker but this power supply natively includes all of the pci express connectors that we needed to hook up these four video cards that means four eight pin and four six pin pci express connectors. Now, because it's fully modular, you can see that this still manages to be, oh, I almost dropped it. This still actually manages to be a relatively tidy build. I don't know if the cameraman can see into the cable management I've done, but I didn't work hard at this. I only spent probably about half an hour, 40 minutes putting this whole thing together. So I was able to route everything around the back of the case through this hole right back here. And then I bring everything up right where it needs to come out to plug right into where it needs to go. The last component selection that we made was the Intel Core i7 Extreme 980X. It's a six core processor. I mentioned overclocking. If you're building a rig like this and you're not overclocking, please just send me a PM on YouTube and ask me for help overclocking. I will help you because you need to do it. That's what it comes down to. And then I said that was last, but it wasn't. My actual very last component was an OCZ Vertex SSD. This is the 120 gig module. It is a last gen, but really any SSD these days is going to be lightning fast and it is supported natively by the half X, which includes a two and a half inch SSD adapter. So thank you for checking out my ultimate four way SLI buyer's guide. I mean, if you're actually going to build one of these, let me know. I'd be curious to see your uh, build and I'd be happy to post it as a video response to this video. And thank you for checking out NCIX Tech Tips.